Hi, I'm Dr. Hackey Reitman. Welcome to another episode of Exploring Different Brains. And today we have Joanne Marianne, who is on the board of NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, right here in Broward County. Welcome. Thank you very much, Dr. Hecke. Why don't you please introduce yourself better than I just did, Joanne? No problem. Uh, my name is Joanne Marianne, and I am a, a board member for the National Alliance on Mental Illness here in Broward. Um, I've been with them for uh, been with the board for about two and a half years, and I came to NAMI as a volunteer. Um, the reason why I did that is my my I have uh, my I am. I am myself diagnosed with two mental illnesses, and I wanted to seek opportunities to expand awareness, and NAMI was a wonderful choice for me to align with. And get rid of the stigma, too. Now, big, big issue. What are, the, um, what are your, some of your labels? Not that I'm big on labels, but right. what are some of your diagnoses? So I am diagnosed with anxiety and depression, and that was uh, that diagnosis only occurred in my um, early 40s. Um, I'm uh, I was a corporate career um, employee and had rose the ranks uh, to a very senior level. When um, one day, after three months of thinking that I was shaking and had something going on, that I had uh, an anxiety attack and was diagnosed as such. So um, really my commitment has to do with a lot with um, bettering the environment uh, for corporate employees in corporate America. Well, I salute you for taking one of your personal challenges, turning it into a positive thing to help others. That's what we try to do here at Different Brains. When I wrote the Asper Tools book on Asperger's autism, it was to help give positive tools and um, what you just reminded me of is I was just chastised by some of our neurodiverse staff who noted I've been under a lot of stress lately. And they suggested, why don't you start writing some articles about stress and maybe do something about it? And I said, well, I, I don't know about that. But I ended up with 10% happier. And the reason I bring that up is that was started by Dan Harris, who was an anchor on TV who had live on TV a panic attack. Very familiar with it. Saw yeah. it myself. <laughs> I read his book also. Yes, yes. Very, very inspirational. And the mindfulness, which has been shown to, in, now that we have modern technology, they can actually measure these things. It's uh, pretty interesting stuff. Now, so you decided that you're going to take the bull by the horns and you're going to help out NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness here in Broward County and also nationally. And what are some of the big things on your plate that you really, really feel are the big projects going on? I think um, number one is education. Um, I think there are a lot of people that are interested and have a natural will to help people. Um, mental health is not a very clear, understandable um, medical illness, uh, medical illness uh, because you don't see the symptoms or you don't see something physical is probably the better word. So the more that we can educate, um, the more that people will figure out how they best can support uh, the, um, their families, their friends, their coworkers. So I think that's most important. Um, of course, that comes with raising awareness, um, breaking the stigma, and a lot of reports recently where corporations are raising uh, and elevating the importance of mental illness so they can support their employees as well. So the employee need not be afraid to say, look, I am having this issue, yeah. and here's the help I need, here are the accommodations I need to do a good job for you. Yes. Um, in my personal circumstance, when I was diagnosed with depression and um, anxiety, I myself was working in a corporation, and this was 11 years ago. Um, I, was, um, I ended up taking a 90-day leave of absence. Uh, but at the time, everything was, you know, we had HIPAA, of course, but everybody 
really didn't know how to help. Um, and when I returned to work, um, everybody just had a kind of a hush-hush situation. And that's, of course, due to lack of education um, by others. And again, this growing trend where corporations are trying to embrace and educate and support. Um, but you know, one of the things I actually shared uh, with others is that um, my psychiatrist recommended that I avoid going into hospital treatment because though everything is uh, private and protected, um, because of the stigma, if information got out that I was um, in a mental institution or a mental health organization for a few, for treatment, um, maybe my, my position would not, it would, maybe I would be judged for the responsibilities that I had. Well, I think that one of the approaches <clears throat> that's now happening on the corporate front is an interesting one. It's taking the tack of showing corporations how, look, you can make more money of course. if you accommodate. Um, and when used, uh, I was on a panel once with Jose Velasco, the global leader for SAP, the world's largest software company. And he said, he took me to task on the panel in the sense that he said, Hacky, this is not a social welfare program. This is good for our bottom line. This is a business transition. Get the best person for the job. Sometimes those differences can be, in fact, helpful too. So by looking through the prism of everyone's brain is a little bit different, how can I help that individualized individual maximize their performance? It's good for everybody. Well, there's um, obviously lots of surveys out there that talk about um, absenteeism um, and how great mental health is just most certainly another illness that contributes to uh, abs absenteeism or sick days. Um, and of course it could be the individual that they're taking care of or their family or family members or friends. Um, no different than uh, a sick child home with the flu could be there a sick child that's having um, a difficult time with their diagnosed mental illness. Sure, and as far as the work time goes, the new statistics are very interesting, especially to me as an orthopedic surgeon. You know, it used to be the biggest thing that had people out of work was back pain, back injuries. Now it's mental health issues. And we have to address it. And we've got to take the bull by the horns and, and, uh, and deal with it. In your capacity of communicating and getting the word out on NAMI, what are some of the, uh, the projects you've been on and what's some of the progress that you've made? Well, one of the most recent things um, that I have started to participate in is um, what we call NAGS, the NAMI Advocacy Group. Um, this in Broward County uh, has become a very strong initiative where we are getting behind and um, pursuing uh, bills that could support uh, mental health people with housing and other types of support because we have no dedicated housing for those suffering with a mental illness. Um, and as um, been mentioned, you have expenses for hospital stays, you have expenses for even, even after a hospital, there's expenses in continuing your recovery. So there's a lot of different issues and there needs to be people that are just advocating on behalf of, of those who are diagnosed with mental illness. So um, the NAG group, NAMI Advocacy Group, um, just again, uh, part of NAMI Broward uh, has initiated this and really has taken it all the way to Tallahassee. So um, I think that's a very important thing that I've joined. I'm a cert most certainly are learning a lot about this, learning more about politics. Um, but you know, as much as we can surround every avenue to you know provide more positive environments for. Um, those with mental illnesses. This is a very important thing that we need to do. What are some of the uh, recommendations you can make to uh, those of our audience? And I know you're not a clinician, but as one who uh, um, has some degree of anxiety and depression, 
to those in our different brains uh, audience who might have some anxiety and some depression, what advice might you have for them? You know, the self-recognition sometimes is not that easy. I'm speaking from the heart, not from a, being a proud person, though that is a lot of people. It's pride. Um, but being able to self-recognize um, is a challenge. Um, you know, it took for me, a um, psychiatrist, to diagnose that I wasn't what, what I was experiencing. But if something feels abnormal, um, in any case, especially in mental health, it's always better to seek a, uh, a professional. And when I went through my experience, which really was kind of what I called my explosion day, um, I was working both with a psychiatrist and a psychologist. I used to call this my A-team. Um, and bottom line, don't you want to feel your best? And that's why I think you pursue help um, so you can have the best day every day. Joanne, can you talk about the role that family and friends play in this? Absolutely, and I have firsthand knowledge of that. Um, when I had my diagnosis and I was going through my migration to um, finding a place that I was stabilized, um, I had an army of people surrounded by me who were really not sure what I was going through, but knew that they needed to be there to support me. Uh, and that really encompassed um, friends and family. Um, uh, friends and family, doctor and psych, uh, psychologist or therapist. Um, but, and, and that is critical. Um, nobody really knew, nor did I, what I was going through and experienced. Uh, but support team is really important. But I did also have um, a hospitalization a few years ago. And it was in the hospital that I really recognized and painfully acknowledged how many people don't have a support team that I had. Um, and I almost call it very lucky. Between great benefits, family members supporting them, um, just taking care, just holding your hand and say you're gonna have a better day tomorrow. And I think that really is a very, very big issue. Again, it's lack of education in a lot of ways. How can people find out more about your work? Well, um, as, as a board member, I'm part of a board who has board responsibilities. Um, most certainly, we are part of the Broward County NAMI. That's what we do. Uh, so really redirecting a lot of what we're doing is found through the office. But a primary role for us is definitely reaching out to the community and seeking partners that want to make an investment into NAMI. And that is because we're a nonprofit. The more programs that we can offer the community, the better we're serving them. And frankly, that takes money. So really that, I believe, is our charter in many ways. What is your website? The NAMI website is www.namibroward.org, and that's N-A-M-I. Na Great. Is there anything you'd like to cover that we haven't covered? Um, I guess I think the most one of the m most pleasing things that I'm seeing right now is CEOs of major corporations um, not only financially recognize uh, um, productivity loss, but are acknowledging that mental health is just as important as medical help. And now creating plans and embracing uh, the importance of supporting their employees with mental health. Um, there's many statistics about how many employees within their corporations there, there are. I always um, acknowledge that it's not necessarily always the employee, but a family member that they could be taken care of. So that's um, a real important trend to me um, because with my experience 11 years ago, not in any disrespect to my employer, it was just not the time where this acknowledgement was occurring. And when you are an employee, um, you know, this is a big part of your life. So support and acknowledgement is really, really important. And taking away the stigma by having a positive environment is, in my opinion, very critical to success. Well, on that note, 
Joanne, it's been a pleasure to have you. We've been so lucky to have uh, Joanne Marianne, who is on the board of NAMI, National Alliance on Mental Illness, right here in Broward County, Florida. And thank you so much for being with us. We hope to have you back again. Really been my pleasure. Thank you. I'd love to come back. Exploring Different Brains is a production of Different Brains, Inc. For more information, visit us at differentbrains.org.